As you might know, a couple of months ago I released my first library album, and even though I'm quite happy with the results, along the way I have learned some valuable lessons. I learned them the hard way by messing up and trying to fix them in the middle of the night, and that's why I'm making this video. So you don't have to make these mistakes and can enjoy the good night's sleep that you so desperately need. The mistake I made revolved around exporting stems. When you write music for a library, not only do you have to deliver your final product, your stereo mix, you also need to deliver different stems. So that means one track for every group of the orchestra you're using. You do this so when someone who buys your track and uses it can change little things in dynamics or maybe remove the vocals in a part where they don't need them so they can tune it a little bit more specific for their project. And when you export all these stems, the sum of all the parts should be exactly the same as your stereo file. So here we are in the project file of one of the tracks of my first album. And when I was working on this, I wanted to start with a clean page and a clean slate every time. This way, when I was, would start on a track, I would look through my sample libraries for an instrument I liked that inspired me. I would then start constructing my sound palette from that first idea to fit in new sample libraries that would allow me to create a unique sound palette for each and every track. So this template, as I would say, is completely different than the one from another track. Some instruments will be similar, but they was, it was already built from the ground up for every track. I used a folder structure to keep track of the different instruments that I would later have to move into groups and into stems. And this way of working allowed me to create 12 tracks that are in the same style, but very different and varied in nature and instrumentation. So when the track was finished and everything was grouped, I would then move to the mixing phase and that's where the trouble began. When mastering I, apply, I used Ozone to apply some effects to my stereo out and the track was done. All done and dusted, happy composer, let's export some stems, shall we? So there I went soloing the different groups and exporting them one by one. This takes quite some time considering it takes about half the length of the track to export an audio file from said track. A track of 3 minutes with about 6 to 7 stems each times 12 tracks, well you do the math. After everything was exported, I was one happy camper and finally ready to send everything to the library. And that's when it hit me. A couple of the effects I used on my mastering chain were some compression and limiting. These are two types of plugins that help you control your dynamics and to prevent your mix from clipping. So how do these plugins work? Both with limiting and compression, you have a certain threshold. So as soon as your dynamics hits the threshold, your plugin starts working. The ratio then determines how fast the effect will be. So a very sharp ratio will cause your music to peak at the threshold and then everything above that is cut off immediately. However, if you have a bit of a softer ratio or a soft knee, as they would call it, uh, it's when after the threshold the dynamics will be decreased more slightly. I had a limiter and compressor applied to my stereo out so I could control my dynamics and prevent my track from clipping. However, this is where I made my mistake. When I started exporting my stems by soloing the different tracks, Everything went through the same signal flow and therefore through the same plugins. However, when I export only strings, the compressor will react differently. The volume of just strings is of course lower than the volume of the entire track. So it might be that the strings hit the threshold way later or not at all when you're exporting them solo. Therefore, the compressor or limiter will react differently to your track and the end result will be different. If you would sum up all these stems together, the result will be far from your original master file. The result will be this. I figured this out at 11 p.m. before my deadline and I freaked out. I tried to fix it and there is a folder called panic test on my hard drive where I try to, you know, figure something out how I could go around this problem so I could fix it for my deadline the day after. Realizing I couldn't, I just called up my supervisor and told him, you know, here's the problem, what should I do? And he just told me, you know, for now it's okay to just put the levels of your stems lower so they are softer and they are not clipping and that's okay for now. I spent the rest of the night fixing the problem and sending everything to them. Mistake made, lesson learned. The fact that this problem was not solvable the moment I found out about it is because the root of it is way earlier in the process. It has all to do with your signal flow. Where do your instruments go? Where do you apply your plugins and effects like EQ, compression, limiting? Where do you apply your reverb? And how do you prevent all of this from clipping? All these things were things I hadn't taken into consideration when I started working on this album and they bit me in the behind once I had finished it. The master file it was 
perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it. But since you need to export stems when writing library music, film music, trailer music, you need to have this sorted. So I'm now writing my next album and I just want to dive into the changes I've made to improve my workflow so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. The first thing I did was trying to figure out my signal flow before I would start a project. In Cubase you can route different instruments through different group tracks until you get to the stereo out. This way you have better control over the different groups and articulations you'll be using and mixing with uh, and can apply effects to more than one instrument at the same time. In this spreadsheet I would figure out how the routing would work for the instruments I used most of the time. So I also indicated where I would apply my effects. So I have reverb, EQ and compressions and some mastering things. This is all very rudimentary and can still change when I'm working. But for me this was just a good way to figure out how will I get my signal flow right to save myself some time and to avoid this problem I've been having. And while I was making this I made the mental note to myself that the stereo out is left to be un. Touched. When I have clipping issues or there are effects I want to apply, I may have to make sure I apply them to the stems and leave the stereo out untouched always. This way I know when I'm exporting all these different stems, I know that when I would add them up together, the end result would be exactly the same as whatever is going through my stereo out. My initial thought was to just have this signal flow template ready and loaded in Cubase. And whenever I would load an instrument, I would load it within the group it belonged to. And therefore I would keep the flexibility I liked so much of building your score from the ground up, let's say. And this worked very well for the first track I wrote for the new album. However, when I had finished the first track, and keeping in mind the mental notes I'd made, I took it one step further. So here's one of the tracks for the new album I'm writing. As you can see here, everything is neatly organized in tracks and groups and colors and everything. And if I pull up the mixer real quick, you can see here that this string patch is going to the long strings which is going to the string stem. And here are all the stems combined, going to the pre-master, going to the stereo out, which has no effects on it. This applies to all my tracks. And now when I export my stems, no longer do I have to individually export each and every single group, but now I can just export all these group tracks, the stems at the same time, which is a huge time saver. And earlier I said, I want some flexibility when I'm writing a piece. I like to pull out new instruments as I work and build the sound palette from scratch as it were. But at the same time, I know there are a lot of instruments that I will be using a lot of the time. And in this project, there are a lot of these sample libraries that are loaded in, because this one I did build from scratch. On some tracks, there are already some different plugins. I have my reverb set up. I have made some volume adjustments here and there. And I don't want this time to go to waste. So I thought, why not turn this into a template so I don't have to look up and load these instruments every time and make these mixing changes every single time. But now when I start a project, I have everything already set in place to start going and start writing. To do so, you delete all your information. No wait, scratch that. You first save it under a different name. Then you erase everything. It all goes away. Oh, this hurts so much to look at. So now you have an empty project, no MIDI information, but you have your mixing and your mastering information. Next up, you go to File, Save as Template, then you choose a catchy name. And now when I start a new project, I can choose from my list of templates and the new one is right here. No more fixing your signal flow every time and there's a lot of information you will use for the rest of the album already in place. I hope this was helpful. Just promise me don't make the same mistakes that I did. Learn from them and make the changes in your workflow if you didn't know about this already. I'm very proud to announce that my album is now also available on Spotify as of today. So if you want to help a composer out in these weird times, check the link down below and I hope you enjoy. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Show some support if you want and from my space to yours, have a great day and I see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.